self-development with tactics. So, hello and welcome back to the next episode of the self development Tactics Podcast. Today, we're going to go through another psychologytoday.com article. As always, the link is going to be down in the description. But, plot twist, I just have to search for an article at first, really, really quickly. And then we are going to go through it. And then we're going to discuss it. And then we're going to see whether um, it's been an important article or if it's just been some bullshit. Does your personality determine how you perceive illusions? Just rub some dirt on it, the forest is alive. Who tells your story? How we remember Hamilton and ourselves? Is the common infrastructure of psychotherapy a thing? Science is mind blind and we need to fix this. Feeling of sadness after sex? Why is hard why is it hard for some people to apologize? Why do men want more sex partners than women do? It's time for a declaration of independence. How do I start therapy? Four things all binge eating episodes have in common. Let's actually go through that one. Not that I'm just uh, binge eating a lot of times. No, definitely not. So one common misconception is that all binges are the same. Binge eating is a behavior that is becoming increasingly common with estimates forecasting that 2 million US men and women will have BED or BED, binge eating disorder, by 2030. Binge eating can be highly variable between person to person and from episode to episode. However, core similarities like secrecy, non-hungry eating, loss of control and rapid eating all exist. Binge eating is a behavior that is becoming increasingly common among many individuals, including children and adolescents, boys and men, ethnic minorities and older adults. So basically, everyone. In fact, by 2030, it is estimated that around 2 million US men and women will have BED, or BED. It is also one of the few symptoms that occurs in almost all of the eating disorder subtypes. More importantly, the presence of recurrent binge eating is associated with numerous deleterious medical, psychological, and social complications. But are all binges the same? One common misconception is that all binges are the same. Binge eating can be highly variable between person to person and from episode to episode. Identifying which type of binge episode a person engages in is important for better understanding the potential psychological mechanisms that account for its persistence and may help uncover which intervention approach may be most useful. We can usually distinguish between four types of binge in episodes. And then we have four types. One, two, three, four. And then the next one is going to be similarities between binge episodes. So one, two, three, and four once again. And the last one is going to be about getting help. So let's see. The first one, objective binges. And this is the most common type of binge episode and is the one we usually think about whenever the term binge comes to mind. It refers to the consumption of an unusually amount of food, which apparently is more than 1,500 calories in a short period, which is under two hours, accompanied by a sense of loss of control. The second thing is a subjective binge. These types of binges are less common, but research has shown that they may be equally distressing and impairing. It refers to eating what is not considered a large amount of food, but is accompanied by a sense of loss of control. Research indicates that these binges tend to occur commonly in children, as younger people cannot usually consume masses of food that meets that threshold for an objective binge. Yeah, makes sense. You know, even though I mean objectifying it and saying, okay, a binge is only when it is 1,500 calories or more. You know, what about when I eat 1,400? You know, in... Uh, well, I gotta be honest. Two hours is, is quite a long period of time. And I would say that... What's going on then? Um, two hours is quite some time, you know. So, 
it, it kind of feels like a bit too much time. I mean, if you think about some bodybuilder person consuming 1,500 calories in uh, two hours is not that uncommon, I'd say. You know, it obviously depends on the person and, you know, this person, if you kind of think about it, um, is going to be a certain type, you know, meaning uh, big, pretty, pretty, pretty big. I mean, if, if you're consuming 1,500 calories or 1,500 calories <laughs> over the course of two hours, then, um, you know, this has to say something. But I think you get my point. It is like some pretty strange and um, interesting metrics on how to figure out whether something is a binge or not. Anyway, slow motion binges. These, which is the third type, by the way, these episodes can be spotted in advance. A lot of people can fight these binges off for a while, but eventually give in to the urge because they want to relieve some anxiety or tension. There is enjoyment associated with eating during the early phases of this binge, but this quickly fades after the guilt kicks in. And the last one is the half binge. These episodes resemble a subjective binge, but there are also important differences. Half binges occur mostly at night, where the person will eat a relatively large, but not too excessive amount of food in a hurry, but without panic. Half binges are described as an autonomic reaction to some sort of adverse event. I see. So, similarities between binge episodes. Although there are some important differences between the four types of binge episodes, there are also core similarities. The first one is secrecy or secrecy. A half mark feature of all binges is that they are practiced in private. If it is not unusual for a person to lock themselves in their bedroom, bathroom or car while eating, this is typically a consequence of the shame and embarrassment experienced with binge eating. The second one is non-hungry eating. While a lot of binges can be triggered by extreme hunger, during the midst of a binge, this hunger has subsided and the person usually continues to eat even if they're con uncomfortably full. Because binge episodes serve some sort of functional purpose, for example, regulate mood, it is not surprising that they are practiced in the absence of hunger. The third, loss of control. All binges are characterized by loss of control. Without this feature, the eating behavior would probably be classified as overeating. Loss of control in this context refers to the lack of awareness and the inability to stop their behavior. And the fourth and last similarity is rapid eating. A peculiar feature of binge eating is that the speed of eating increases drastically after each mouthful. This feature coincides with the loss of control because the person is operating in autopilot mode and lacks complete awareness of their behavior. Because of this, many people describe not even tasting the food they have eaten because it has been consumed so quickly. Very interesting, you know, really, really, really interesting. But, you know, now the question is, how can you get around that? You know, how can you deal with it? Getting help. It is important to get a hold of binge eating behaviors before they spiral out of control but if you're binged and wondering what now check out my article what to do after a binge eating episode so let's actually check that out as well breaking binge eating.com slash what dash to dash do dash after dash a dash binge why did i write this read this i don't actually know reading time five minutes so before we discuss what you should do after your binge eat, we need to first clarify what exactly binge eating means. Understanding this is important in helping you recognize your own eating behavior. And by the way, I think it is also pretty, pretty, pretty fucked up if you classify it. Because even though somebody might not really think that he or she is binge eating, according to those marks, according to those, uh, according to this, he or she might just be binge eating, you know, which kind of demonizes the behavior, even though maybe somebody is just doing fine with it. I mean, there are some people that only eat one meal a day, and this is probably going to be, you know, 1500 plus calories. You know, it's just some sort of diet. It's just something that people do. And actually some, some pretty high success and highly successful people are actually doing so. But anyway, uh, table of content. I've binged. What do I do now? 
We have discussed a range of strategies you could implement to prevent binge eating. Now let's turn our attention toward what you can and should do after an episode of eating episodes, but may also be useful for helping you deal with the emotions and thoughts experienced after an episode. So let's break these techniques up into the do's and don'ts. What to do after a binge. Stick to the plan. Two fundamental strategies needed to break binge eating are self-monitoring and eating at regular, flexible intervals. Recall that self-monitoring, if done properly and uh, thoroughly, is useful because it provides important information about the the nature of your binge eating while regular eating. I.e. eating three meals and three snacks spaced three to four hours apart is important for addressing the rigid dietary restraint behaviors that are causing you to binge. So if you've had a binge, then you need to ensure you stick to the plan. That is, continue monitoring, write down where you binged, what you were thinking and feeling before and after the episode, what you ate and where you were. This will help you give that vital information needed to move forward, prevent any future setbacks and break the cycle. Yeah. Uh, For example, if you feel a certain way, then not being in this certain space and or place might be a way to get around the binge eating. But more importantly, stick to the regular eating schedule. If you have binged some time during the day, then that shouldn't mean that you have finished eating for that day. You may feel guilt or shame, this is normal, but you need to plan your next meal or snack in around 3 to 4 hours time and you need to eat again at that time. The reason for this is that if you were to restrict yourself for the rest of the day because of the guilt you are experiencing, there is a good chance that you will binge again later that night. Sticking to the plan and not giving up, quote unquote, for that day is pivotal for preventing any further binges in that day. And yes, you're probably not going to be a hungry, uh, not going to be hungry a few hours after your episode. That is fine. Still eat a small snack. Remember, you're not eating for hunger purposes. You're eating this snack to prevent any future binge eating occurrences, which makes sense. You know, even though at first I thought, well. Why would you eat if you're not hungry? It doesn't make any sense, you know, especially when you're having uh, some binge eating disorder and probably are overweight, but not necessarily, but probably. This wouldn't make any sense, but yeah, it, it really does make sense, you know, because you're not going to be hungry. There's not going to be, um, there's not going to be an additional reason for you to binge again. The second thing is be present and productive. When people binge, they experience a whole host of negative thoughts and emotions. The worst thing to do is to be passive. By that I mean sitting in your guilt, shame and despair. Sitting in it will likely give you an urge to either binge again or to compensate. You need to be active and do something about it. This is the secret to recover ring from your binge. Doing something that is independent of food and eating that will occupy your attention and will allow you to drown out those negative thoughts, emotions and urges. Eventually enough time will pass when you're ready to move on from the episode and instead focus on other important things that in life. What that in life. Some nice distraction tasks could be drawing, gaming, journal writing, walking, calling friend, catching up on emails, meditating and or go to sleep. Don't like the last one, don't like the one before as well meditating. Um, Anyway, so what to do after a binge? Diet harder. People, (laughs) I'm sorry, what to not do after a binge? Diet harder. Don't do that. Doesn't make any sense. Um, It is very common for people to commit to going on an even stricter diet after the episode is finished. For example, after binge on the weekend, some may feel that in the coming weeks they need to either eliminate carbohydrates, eat at a much lower calorie deficit, detox or ramp up other self-imposed diet rules. This is the worst possible solution. Why? Because you're setting yourself up for another episode in the future, then another commit uh, commitment to the diet and then even more binge eating. The cycle never ends in dieting harder is your solution. So rather than committing to other diet, it would be much more beneficial to take a more flexible or intuitive approach to eating where you remove any diet rules you have and include as many food types in moderation into your diet as possible. This will allow you to remove the on and off nature of your eating behavior and avoid typical weight fluctuations and enable a healthier relationship with food. The second thing is uh, catastrophize. After binge, people tend to think in all or none terms. They think that they are a failure, that the day is ruined, so it's basically black and white thing. So you need to take a balanced approach to the situation, recognize and acknowledge any slip-ups if you acknowledge your behavior and own it, then you can move on more adaptively. 
Doing so will also prevent you from feeling the need to start fresh on Monday. The third is compensate. There is no good reason to engage in compensatory behaviors. I, for example, taking laxatives, self-induced vomiting after a binge, which is just only going to make things even worse. Practicing these behaviors can only be negative. For example, not only are they physically damaging, but they tend to just add fuel to your weight and shape concerns and desire to eat. In addition, some compensatory behaviors like self-induced vomiting leave you feeling very hungry. Being hungry after you've binged is a major problem when uh, your eating behavior is so chaotic. If you've got an urge to compensate, you just uh, just write it out. Urges disappear over a short period of time. If you're able to write it out, then the urge should dissipate. Engaging in some of these activities mentioned above should help you get rid of the urge again. It comes back to being proactive. Experiencing an episode of binge eating isn't pleasant. It can cause a range of negative thoughts, feelings, and behaviors. However, it doesn't have to be that way. You can implement some of these techniques to mitigate the perceived damage of your period, uh, of your prior episode and prevent the onset of future episodes. As always, this takes practice and patience. Be kind to yourself and acknowledge that it will take some work. Let me know in the comments how you blah, 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 blah. I hope this helped. Gonna see you next time. Bye-bye.